Welcome to this step-by-step -step guide on setting up your brand new Raspberry Pi 02W. I'll walk you through everything you need to get started. First off, what is the Raspberry Pi? It's a compact, affordable computer about the size of a stick of gum. Perfect for learning to code, building projects, or even exploring robotics. The Raspberry Pi 02W is a tiny yet powerful version of the Raspberry Pi family, featuring built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a quad-core CPU that that's more than capable of handling many fun and useful projects. In this video, we'll cover setting up the hardware and software and even cover a mini project where I'll walk you through the steps you need for blinking an LED on and off. Let's start by unboxing our Raspberry Pi 02W. In the packaging, you'll typically find the Raspberry Pi 02W board itself. Now, let's take a closer look at the board. This is the micro USB power port. This is where you'll connect your power supply. And here is your micro USB data port. This is used for connecting USB devices using an and on the go adapter. And here's your micro HDMI port. You'll need a micro HDMI to HDMI cable to connect a display. These are your GPIO pins. 40 pins used for connecting sensors, LEDs, and more. Here comes your micro SD card slot, which is located at the edge of the board, and this is where your operating system will reside. It also comes with wireless connectivity through the built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. This ultra compact form factor is perfect for projects where space is limited. Despite its size, the Pi 02W is powerful enough for a lot of applications. Before we proceed, let's make sure we have all the necessary accessories. Here are some items you would need. A micro SD card. I have a 64 GB class. However, you need at least an 8 GB class. 16 GB is recommended. For a power supply, a micro USB power supply is recommended for stable performance. You would also need a micro HDMI to HDMI cable to connect your Pi to a monitor or display. For connecting your keyboard and mouse, you'll need a micro USB OTG adapter. You'd also need a monitor with an HDMI input or a TV. Now let's prepare the micro SD card with the Pi operating system. Step one is to download the operating system. So go to the official Raspberry Pi website and navigate to the software section where you'll be able to download the Pi imager for your operating system available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Second step is installing the operating system. Install and open the Raspberry Pi imager. Click on choose operating system and select Raspberry Pi operating system bit, which is recommended. Click on next and you'll be prompted to apply the operating systems customization settings, which I recommend doing. This allows you to easily set up your username, password, Wi-Fi, and time zone. I've already set mine up, which is why you see this settings pre-configured. Click right to start the imaging process. This process might take about five minutes. Once it's done, safely eject the micro SD card from your computer. Insert the micro SD card into the slot on the Raspberry Pi 02W. Connect your keyboard and mouse using the micro USB OTG adapter. Attach the HDMI cable to the micro HDMI port and to your monitor. If you're not using Wi Fi, plug in an Ethernet adapter if you want a stable wired connection. Power up the Pi by plugging in the micro USB power supply into the power port labeled power in. You should now see activity lights on the board and a boot screen on your monitor. When setting up my SD card, I pre-configured the operating system with custom settings, including the username, password, Wi-Fi, and time zone. This saved me time during the first boot. However, if you forgot to configure these settings, don't worry, you can still set them up. You have two options. First option is using the interface. If you're using the desktop environment, go to the Raspberry Pi configuration tool, typically found under the preferences menu. From there, you can set up your Wi-Fi, change your username and password, and adjust the time zone as well. Second option is using the terminal. For those who are more comfortable with the command line, you can configure these settings by running the following command, sudo raspi config. These will open the Raspberry Pi software configuration tool where you can navigate to the necessary options. Once the updates are complete, the Pi may prompt you to 
reboot, go ahead and reboot if asked. Welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Let's take a quick tour. The taskbar located at the top will have the menu button, shortcuts and system indicators. The main menu, which you can access by clicking on the Raspberry Pi icon, allows you to access applications and settings. And there are pre-installed applications like the web browser, which allows you to surf the internet with the Chromium browser. There's the file manager, which helps you organize the files and folders. And there's just a terminal that allows you to access the command line interface. To change the desktop background, right click on the desktop and select desktop preferences. Here you can choose a new background or adjust layout settings. Remote access allows you to control your Raspberry Pi from another computer. SSH, which stands for secure shell, lets you access the command line remotely. Go to the preferences menu and select the Raspberry Pi configuration. Click on the interfaces tab, enable the SSH by selecting enabled. The VNC setup also allows you for remote desktop access. In the same interface tab, enable VNC. Click OK. When it comes to accessing remotely, which won't be covered in this video, but if you were to remotely access the Raspberry Pi from another computer, you can use an SSH client like Putty or Terminal to connect through SSH. For VNC, download and install the VNC viewer from Real VNC. And once you enter the Raspberry Pi IP address, you'll be able to connect. Keeping your system updated is crucial. To update your system through the terminal, open the terminal application, run the sudo apt update command whenever you want to install updates in the future if you've just installed the operating system rest assured you already have all the necessary updates the same applies to the next command which is sudo apt full upgrade command which i'm going to be skipping as we don't require it currently when it comes to installing software we can go through a quick example which is getting chrome so to get any software typically you would be able to go to the terminal run in sudo apt install in our case Chromium browser, but this can be other things like OBS Studio or whatever software you're trying to get. To confirm that our installation went through, try opening Chrome by just typing in Chromium browser from the terminal. Alternatively, you can use the add remove software tool from the main menu for a graphical interface. The terminal is a powerful tool and here are some basic commands that I think you should know. First command is ls, which lists files and directories in the current directory. cd change the current directory. pwd prints the current working directory and mkdir helps you create a new directory. For example, if you want to create a new folder, experiment with these commands to navigate and manage files. Raspberry Pi is great for learning programming. Open Tony Python IDE from the programming menu. Let's write a simple program. Type in print hello world. Click the run button. You should see hello world printed in the console below. The Pi also supports Scratch for block based programming and language like Node. JS for JavaScript enthusiasts. We will now cover how to blink an LED using the Raspberry Pi 02W. So what you will need are the LED. You'd also need a resistor. You'd need some jumper wires and a breadboard. We'll be using GPI Open 18 on our Pi 02W and it's labeled as PCM18. When you're using the Broadcom pin numbering, connect the GPI Open 18 to the LED's longer leg through the resistor connect the LED's shorter leg to a ground pin, double check your connections are correct and secure. Now run the script which I've also included in the description by opening up Thoughty, pasting it there and to cover this code on a high level we're basically importing libraries and then we're using the BCM numbering system. We're defining our LED pin in our case which is 18 and we're also having a while loop that is running which turns our LED on and off while waiting for a second and if we wanted to stop all you have to do is press on control C. When you run this code, you should see your LED blinking on and off every second. You've now just created a simple LED blink project on your Raspberry Pi 02W. Encountering issues is normal. Here are some common problems and solutions. Pi not booting. Ensure the micro SD card is properly inserted. Check that the power supply is connected and providing sufficient power. No display output. Verify that the HDMI cable is securely connected to both the Pi and the monitor. Make sure the correct HDMI input is selected on your monitor. If your keyboard or mouse is not working, try connecting them to different USB ports. Ensure they are compatible with the Pi. And for more help, visit the Raspberry Pi forums or refer to the official documentation. To keep your Raspberry Pi running smoothly, when it comes to system maintenance, regularly run system updates to keep software up to date. 
backup important data, especially before major upgrades. For proper shutdown, always shut down the Pi through the menu. If you operate in a place that is not too clean, then consider getting a case to protect it from dust and static. And if you're running any resource intensive application, make sure you have heat sinks or consider getting the cooling fan. And that's it. You've successfully set up your Raspberry Pi. We've unboxed the Pi, prepared the microSD card, set up the operating system and explored the desktop environment. You've learned how to update the system, install software and even write a simple Python program. Thank you for watching. If you found this guide helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Raspberry Pi content.